OK, so I'm just going to walk through this really quick workflow <clears throat> that's actually really good for bringing in like context buildings or like urban context just you know to have in your model to see where things are um, with decently accurate heights and also roads which uh, I think is a pretty you know uh, quite a useful thing to have um, so we're going to start in open street maps uh, the second thing that we're going to want to download is this tool called osm to world.org um, and that's not the tool name. The tool name is OSM2 World um, or OSM2 World, whatever, uh, as well as the Java runtime environment. So this tool needs the Java runtime environment to, to, to run. So you're going to need to download this, and then you'll download this, and you'll get a zip file, and you'll unzip it. And inside of that, you'll get uh, this um, OSM2 World uh, executable JAR file. And that'll open um, in this uh, Java runtime environment. So first things first, let's just go back to OpenStreetMaps. I am going to be I'm looking at, and actually, I'll go to Google Earth here. So my initial sort of um, the thing that provoked this uh, workflow was that I wanted I wanted a different building, but I'm just using this as an example. I kind of just want this like area around Waterloo Station in London, um, and just like this kind of weird, ugly building. Um, and I was thinking, how do I get it? OK, so OpenStreetMaps is a great resource for this. And the thing we're going to want to do is just like zoom in around this area. I've actually already downloaded. Um, but just like frame up the area that you're interested in, and then go ahead and um, press Export. And if I refresh this, yeah, so you can press export here and that'll download an OpenStreetMaps file. I just called that uh, OpenStreetMaps file not Waterloo because it's not Waterloo. Um, second thing I'm going to do is open the um, OSM to world viewer and go open OSM file. I'm going to navigate to my desktop where I saved it and open the not Waterloo um, OSM. I'm just going to open it. <clears throat> and so it kind of uh, delivers you this pretty good looking 3D model. There's some things that we definitely need to trim up and, and like refine, especially if we want to use this in like a nicer rendering or something. But, um, you know, for all intents and purposes, this is pretty good. Uh, I'm not going to browse in this window. I just see that it's there and it's the area that I'm interested in because this viewer is actually really horrible. But I'm just going to go file, export OBJ file, and then I'm going to save it as not Waterloo, just uh, in my desktop. So I actually already saved it there. Um, so just save that, save it as an OBJ. I'm going to Rhino, and you're just going to file, import, and then just select not Waterloo. I'll give you these um, this dialog box. Um, the only two that I really check are set display color from OBJ material object and map OBJ Y to Rhino Z. So for whatever reason, the OBJ uh, Z is like flipped from what Rhino's is. Um, <clears throat> so I'm just going to press OK, and then I'll take a second to import. because And there is <clears throat> one caveat to this is there is quite a bit of refining to do. Um, oh, I shouldn't say quite a bit. There's a lot of like rogue geometry that you're probably just going to want to delete. Like I found that train tracks are like have an extra height and are sort of like um, overly prominent. Um, there's just a couple things that like are not so great about. You can kind of see here, like these train tracks extend like really far down for some reason. I don't know why that is, <laughs> but there's some like strange like geometric things that I that I don't like. Um, but you can see here in Arctic view, it actually looks pretty good. You know, so we have the streets, we have the sidewalks, um, a lot of pathways, we have the building heights, and these building heights are pretty accurate. I've, I've kind of checked most of them, and I think they're like about right. Um, so that's pretty nice. Maybe I'll just clean this up. And actually, I'll go into a shaded view. So I can see a little better. 
Um, yeah, there's all these like weird meshes down here. So <clears throat> something else, because all these OBJ and meshes have a color associated with them, something that's really useful and something you probably won't get is the layers of this object. So obviously there are all these different meshes. You can select them. Um, but a quick way to do this is so like just select this grass area. I'm just going to go sell color. Oops. Sell color. And then it's just going to select all of the grassy area. And I'm actually going to delete it because I don't want that. And I'm going to do the same thing on this parky thing. I want to get rid of that. OK. Um, and then eh, same with the trees. The trees are a little funky. I don't know why. Um, something I would do with the trees, actually, that might make this look a little better. Um, just fire up Grasshopper really quick. So I'm going to select. I'm going to slow. OK, hold on. It's thinking. Sorry. I'm going to go ahead and select these trees, and then I'm going to do my cell color command again. So then I basically am selecting all the trees in the model. I'm just going to group them. And then I'm just going to come into Rhino and just reference each of those meshes. So here now we have 392 meshes. So that's 392 trees. Um, and then I think I'm just going to find the volume of those. So I'm going to have 392 volumes. Actually, OK, let's do this bounding box. OK, so now we've got bounding boxes around all these trees. And yeah, that already looks better. <laughs> so let's see. I guess we could just do that, right? Just make them box, make them cubes. It's like already so much better. <laughs> um, but probably, well, depends on how you want. But you can basically just reference these trees and use the points to reference new trees. So like maybe I want to do um, find the volume of this. Um, and then just use this as like a maybe I want to do a sphere, mesh sphere, and just use that as a base all of these centers to make a mesh sphere. I'll just choose my radius. I have no idea what the scale is here. So let's see. That's the other thing. When this comes in, the scale might be really wonky. OK, that doesn't work. I need something higher. Maybe five. OK, sure, five. That works. Um, Turn that off. So now you have your little lollipop trees, and I'll just bake these. Uh, bake them on my one layer. Um, one is up here, and I'll just call this trees. That's better. No more ugly trees. And then one other thing that I like to do with these models is just like add a new ground or kind of like a circular ground. I think it's kind of nice when they kind of like spill off the map a little bit. Um, and then I'll just bring this down a hair. So we can move it up. Line with the yeah, perfect. Okay, cool. So yeah, that's all I kind of do. Um, this is a really easy way to get in your sitemap really pretty quickly and easily. And especially if you're kind of focusing on this area, it's helpful to have. Um, and then maybe I just want to go back to like, go back to an Arctic view or something. And this already, I mean, like, it's not perfect. It's like, there's obviously some things I could change, but you're already kind of starting in a pretty good position. So you've got a lot of the context um, and a lot of the kind of stuff you might want to start uh, building your model on. Um, and then just for reference, I'm looking back at this building and actually now I'm looking at the heights. It actually doesn't look quite right. So this will probably have to do with your OpenStreetMap data. But you know, for uh, for what it is and for how quick and dirty it is, um, this will give you at least some contextual um, contextual buildings and, and roads and stuff like that. So that's pretty helpful. 